I ordered a uh, Ryzen Threadripper CPU, and they sent me this inside of it from Newegg. <laughs> Try to get some better lighting. Does that make it a little brighter? Yeah. So, I got my new computer, super happy about it, it's going to be a Threadripper CPU in uh, this new build, but with this build, I'm going to use the Thermaltake 900 uh, uh, case. So it's a super huge tower, right now I don't have any of the cooling stuff, but I'm going to get the cooling stuff in a little bit. So, here we go. Kind of already unboxed the, the tower a little bit, but... Everything else I haven't unboxed. Here's a look at the tower. And this thing is massive, as you can see. Let's take the plastic off of this. Try to get the whole shot. There you go. So it is huge. I mean, come around to the side over here. Look how big it is. It is huge. And so I'm about six foot and look how big it is. And I'm sitting down like this. Goes up probably to my hip. A little bit lower. And it just has a massive amount of space. So yeah, and inside this CPU, we're gonna get a Ryzen uh, Threadripper CPU in there. Have some uh, new thermal compound we're gonna use in there to keep it, give it a, a nice contact to the, the water block. Got a 960 Evo NVMe SSD, M.2. And I got this uh, Trident Z uh, DDR4 memory. It's uh, white and silver. I'm going to try to go for like a white, blue and red type of build. Um, but this is uh, advertised to go up to 3600 megahertz uh, with a timing of 1515, 1536. So really fast, really fast memory. Fastest I could find. And uh, it's actually uh, two sticks, 16 gigabyte sticks. So I'll have a total of 32 gigabytes of memory. Probably expand on that later on if I need it. And what I'm gonna build all of this on is the Aurorus um, X399 Gaming 7 motherboard from Gigabyte. So yeah, super excited about it. If you wanna take a look at it, you can open it up. Here's what it, here's what it looks like. A little uh, team up and fight on logo when you open up the box. It's kind of fancy. And here's the motherboard. And I gotta say, this motherboard has some heft to it. This thing is heavy. Whoa, it looks so cool on the bottom. Yeah, so this thing uh, is supposed to have LED lights. You can take this little plate off and you can put new plates on. It kind of has like a little uh, shimmer effect on there. And you move it back and forth. I think that's really cool. And all of these, uh, so for the M.2 slot, this thing right here, their M.2 slots they have this little shield and supposedly, I, I mean, I don't know because these kind of feel like they're made of plastic, but supposedly these shields help keep it cool. 
So we'll we'll test that out and see if it actually does anything. Maybe I'll just lift it up and leave it off, and then put it back on and see if it has any effect. Um, but yeah, it's a really good motherboard supposedly, but there's not very many benchmarks for it online. So I'll probably just do a benchmark just to show what it, what it can do. Uh, comes with these uh, it's like decals and stickers and VIP card membership stuff. It's it's kind of neat. I don't know if I'll use it, but it's, it's neat. And it also comes with a multilingual installation guide. Oh, and it also comes with uh, this, I guess. I don't know that was. Is that a guitar pick? It's like a little badge. It almost looks like a guitar pick. I think you 3M can use badge. it. 3M badge. It's kind of got uh, embossing on it, so you can kind of feel like the difference of it there. So that's kind of cool. And then the multilingual guide looks like that, <laughs> and it's pretty pretty simple. I mean. But it gives you a rundown on the way you're supposed to do things. I guess the only thing you really have to really be cognizant of is uh, that the Threadripper CPU is supposed to be installed in a special way. So yeah, keep that in mind. Then it talks about uh, how you're supposed to connect the motherboard uh, with your your reset button, your power button, your eight, uh, your hard drive lights, how you connect the Molex. Um, CPU, Molex cable, or connector, and all that type of stuff. And inside of the actual user's manual, it's like a driver CD. It's uh, handy to have around in case for whatever reason you're running Linux or something like that and you can't get access to the internet. At first, you have to install some drivers. So, yeah, I'm not going to go through this whole manual, but it does so show some um, cool. Um, does show some cool um, bio stuff in the manual. So supposedly you can install upgrade BIOS without needing an operating system. So if your CPU isn't working, I've had that happen to me before. That's cool. Yeah, neat, neato. So I guess we'll look at this one next. So I got the Samsung SSD, the 960 EVO M.2, 500 gigabyte. And with this one, cut away from you. That's the way you're supposed to cut things. You don't cut yourself. Okay. It's a box in a box. So that's what it looks like. That is really teeny. <laughs> teeny weeny. So that's probably going to fit right there. Looks like a nice short one. Looks like they got a bigger slot for some bigger ones, but this is a smaller one. And that's basically it. Oh my one gosh, sided. it's so thin. It's amazing how small these things are. And then, whoop, underneath here, it also comes with a little guide that for some reason also has a sticker on it. So get the on it. And yeah, guide. I guess this thing just talks about the warranty, how to install, how to transfer your files and stuff like that. So that's cool. All right, I'll do the memory. Trident Z, G skill Trident Z, uh, white and silver memory. Let's open that up. Remember, cut away from yourself. <laughs> and there they are. That's what they look like. I like the look of these ones. I was really happy to see that these ones had a really nice timing. Let's see if it, their advertised speeds are actually uh, something you can live up to. Um, I can of course test these on multiple different motherboards to prove if it does live up to its uh, rated speeds. 
But for right now, we're just going to test it on this uh, brand new one we got. They're pretty hefty, really nice looking. It's going to go well with my build. And this actually does come with a sticker as well. It's a little G Skill sticker. If you wanted to put these all on your um, on your computer tower case after you're done with your build, it's up to you. I mean, if it goes with the build, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to do. And then for the main event, something pretty much I'm sure everybody's already seen. I kind of already opened this a little bit. That's why. I, uh, Normally, I have to tear off this little uh, piece of paper, cardboard. So here's the Ryzen Thread Ripper. This is a really awesome case. I'll probably just keep it, put it on my bookshelf, as I said before. Supposedly, you just unlock it like that, and it just pops out. And there's that, that's what it looks like. It's really cool. Yeah, and inside this box, we have Ryzen Threadripper uh, stickers, another uh, semi-embossed one. It's kind of got a little bit of grooving to it. Kind of feels cool. Seems pretty good quality. Not as good quality as that uh, Aorus sticker by Gigabyte. Then, uh, get this thing off. It's like see-through. Is that plastic? Is that plastic? Oh, you think you push on it? No. I think that's supposed to stay on there. No. I think you just pull on it. No. This thing's really on there. Don't break it. <laughs> that thing was really on there good. It almost seemed like I was breaking it. And pull this top off like this if it wants to come out. There you go. I managed to pull it out without breaking it. <laughs> and then slide the CPU out. And man, this thing is gold. Heavy. Ooh, can and I feel yeah, it? Yeah, that's, that's gold. And it looks like I just pulled this thing out. But it looks like there's a little bit of discoloration right here. Can and right I feel here. it? So it'd be interesting to see. You can touch the top, but you can't touch the bottom. Don't touch the gold plating and stuff. It will poke me? No, it's just supposed to stay clean. It's got to make really good contact. So I was just comparing um, in the light all the connection points on there. It looks really good. It looks good, except there's like a slight discoloration, like right here. It's almost barely visible and right there. You can barely see it. I don't know what that is. Hopefully that doesn't mess with anything. If it does, I might have to clean that off. But then the Ryzen uh, CPU Threadripper uh, comes with uh, this little tool. You can use it on the motherboard to uh, Open these slots up here and here and here. And then, what's also needed is this little bracket here. So this little bracket makes it so that you can connect it to your uh, water block. So if you have, um, what was it, the Thermaltake Ring uh, 3 or whatever, the RGB one, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can use to connect this. Now, they do have a Corsair uh, article that just came out that said these water blocks should be able to be adapted uh, with their old water blocks. I think I have the, well, let me just take a look. Here. So I have this old GPU, and this is a Hydro Series HG10 on an AMD. R9290 and so supposedly this water cooler should work so I'm gonna to try to take this one off and I'll test it out and see if it works I'm gonna later connect this thing back up to uh, the computer 
uh, back up to this water, uh, this GPU, to use in my old computer. You already took it out. Which I, uh, my old computer's over here. So this is my old computer. It has uh, the GeForce um, uh, 1070 in it. Kind of hard to see. see. It. No, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, yeah, this is. Uh, we're gonna put this GeForce uh, GTX uh, 1070 into this build. That old uh, GPU flight, so you gotta stand back a little. Okay, so for this, all I did was I unscrewed the three, two, and then the one, and then it just lift up. So you don't lifts up. You don't have to take out the screws or anything like that. Then supposedly there's this little bar. Your hand kind of in the way. Whoops. It's kind of a little bit uneven on this thing, so yeah. don't want to make that fall. Now if you do that, I think you're just supposed to Some leverage on this thing. It's got a hinge right here. So it goes up with these blue tabs, I think. That's what you're doing. Oh, how'd you grab? I really think it's not supposed to take this long. You're just trying to be extra careful with it. Don't you have to unscrew it? No, I already unscrewed it. With the little thing? There it goes. I was just being really extra careful on it, but it was it was kind of stuck on there. You really had to pull up on these uh, these little it's blue leaning, tabs. It's leaning, Dad. Dad. It's okay. It's fine. So yeah, after you do that, I think you just take this thing out. Really stuck in there, good. That's just the guard. And then you can put the new one in. So I'm pretty sure. There's only one way you can put this in. Right there. Right there. <laughs> oh, seated nice. It goes and pops into place there. And the pins on the board look nice and straight. That's good. And I think you just push it back down. Fun thaw. <laughs> Seems to be seated on there good. And after you do that, close that down. And it says to close, you do one, two, and three. So we just do our one. 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 One and a half. <laughs> just a lot of turns. <laughs> Screwed in anything there? <laughs> I don't. Are you screwing it the right way? No, it's not going in. You're not screwing it the right way, maybe. You might be right. <laughs> Is it getting on this stuff? No, oh, there it goes. I think it. No. So, it looks like there's clearance. Maybe you just have to push harder. Yeah. 
And I'm really underestimating how delicate I have to be with this thing. So I really had to push hard on there to get that to go down. I'm not cranking on it super hard. And yet again, two, a little bit more forceful. Two and a half. <laughs> the, the numbers, uh, Sophia, weren't about how many turns you're supposed to do. It's about the order for which screw to screw. I know. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> this must be painful to watch. I, I totally agree with you. This is painful to do. I just poked your hat. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to move this over here. Some more space. Oh, it's really terrible lighting. Because your arm has like a shadow over there. Over here. That works. Oh, that's better. Way better. The screw doesn't want to go in. Is it on there at least? Looks like it's lined up just fine. Maybe we'll just loosen this up a little and then try again. Gee. <sighs> loosen this up a little bit more. Why are you loosening it? We'll see if this uh, this bracket is not going in right. Are you going the right way again? No, it's going the right way. You tried both ways? Oh, that This thing just doesn't want to go in. But it, is it at least on there? First guy in history for uh, screw down a CPU for it to take 12 hours. It this took like. Just does not want to hold go on. Down. Let me look at the time. It took actually. Six minutes. <laughs> Don't remind me. I probably got that wrong, but. <laughs> all right, so we're just gonna tighten this down all the way. See if that works. That's as far as it can go. Try now. So yeah, this is just not wanting to go down. Is it still going to work though? It's got to go down. It's going to happen. Do you have to push harder? Pushing super hard. It does not want to go down. Is it? How do you know it's not down? Because it's not getting screwed in. Try to lift it up. 
You gotta make. Is the thing churning? So right here I have the HG uh, ST uh, hard drive that I'm going to use as the backup drive for the new build. Uh, this hard drive uh, I got because of the recommendation from Backblaze which has some uh, really awesome um, benchmarks that they do. If you don't know, uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but they have uh, a service where they provide cloud uh, backups. I actually use Spider Oak, so uh, because they don't support Linux, Spider Oak does support Linux. So I always go with the options that support Linux, um, even though Backblaze does work really well as well. So whatever. Um, but they have a really awesome benchmark, and in their benchmarks, they said at the time of when I got this that the HGST drives uh, lasted for a really long time, and the time that they lasted for, they ran really well compared to like Seagate and Western Digital and all that other type of stuff. Now, I mean, that might have changed. You should always go and look at, you know, all the different benchmarks to see which ones last longer. And I was planning on putting, in the, putting this into a server when I first got it. So I just wanted to be running, you know, 24 seven. Now, I've already had the server running for probably I think over two years and I'm ready to get some new drives for it, probably some 10 terabyte drives. And that'll, you know, perform my backup on my other computer, which will perform my backup on my spider rope stuff and so yeah I'll just have all my backups for my own computer uh, not taking up my bandwidth uh, bandwidth uh, from the network so yeah good drives when I bought it don't know if they're still good drives but yeah and uh, here's the little server build that I had that I was talking about just a little one nothing nothing huge um, has uh, Xeon in there with like six um, six ports and uh, just just so you get a quicker uh, more in-depth view of the old build I'll try to take this cover off so you can look inside now this old build part in the mess but this thing is dusty super dusty and um, yeah I haven't cleaned this for a long time, but as you can see, or maybe you can see, there's the MSI Military Class 2 in there and a water cooling, stuff like that. Let's move this cable out of the way and you can see on the top part, it has the radiator with the fans that are also very dusty and also this power supply. 1050 uh, HX power supply. Now this power supply is definitely way over the top for this build. Um, it's not fully modular. Uh, it's, it's not a very good CPU, uh, no, PSU at all. But, you know, I might end up uh, leaving it in there. Maybe not. I'm not really sure. Maybe I'll use it for something else. I, I, I don't know. But this one does have, you know, a couple different uh, hard drives in there. This is uh, three terabyte and four terabyte. One that I cannibalized from an external uh, USB three enclosure. Just popped it in there. And uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to use those, but I do have a couple of SSDs back there, which you can't really see, but they're, you know, some more um, Samsung SSDs. Uh, the 960. Uh, Pro SSD, uh, Evo 960 Pro SSD, and then I have like another PNY 250 gigabyte one. The other one's like 512 gigabytes. So I'm gonna take the Samsung SSD, put it in the new build, and then um, leave the 250 gigabyte one because I already have enough backup. And this is just gonna be for movies and it's just gonna be for uh, games and simple games and stuff like that that uh, I wanna play with my family or when I wanna sit on the couch. So yeah. There it is, and uh, yeah, more to come later. Thanks. All right, so now it's time for the RAM. What we're gonna do. It's kind of blurry. Okay. Just put it in the slot. Usually these are marked. Oh yeah, there they are. This side's marked right here. 
and this side's marked over here. Just like A slots are here. The rainbow is ref your rainbow light is reflecting on the thing, so mm -hmm. it looks really cool. Nice. We've got one more slot right here. Only one side goes down on this board. That's different than what I'm used to. Maybe I'm just uh, used to making older PCs. So I haven't made a new one for quite a while. There you go. Should be locked and loaded. One thing I almost forgot to mention is what's included in the box um, for the Horus Gigabyte uh, Gaming 7 three, uh, X399 motherboard. So hang on, let me just pause this. So basically, uh, I've got a SLI bridge. Uh, zip ties or twist ties, some velcro strap tie downs, SATA cables, SATA cable, some uh, see here, it's like uh, some more SATA cables, SATA and power. Fork bit, wrench, screws, the G connector, which I really like the fact they included this. Man, I, I really hate having to try to connect all my plugs, all my jumper plugs for the front of the case. And this does make it a little bit easier, so that's really cool they included that. Some Wi Fi antennas, and uh, the back plate. So, yeah, that's really cool. Got all the stuff. All right, everybody, just wanted to uh, let you guys know of uh, um, the, the power supply that I'm using. Uh, the power supply here is going to be an 850 B3 uh, bronze power supply. I just got this because uh, I don't think I'm going to be running four graphics cards anytime soon. And I mean, if I do end up getting like, uh, you know, multiple 1080 Ti's or whatever comes out next for Volta or something like that, then I might upgrade. But for now, uh, this will do me with just like one, maybe, maybe one more. So I'm just going to use this for now. And uh, it was only a hundred bucks. So it's good. Fully mod modular. So, you know, I won't have to worry about ugly cables or anything like that. It's EVGA, so I mean they're really good at making power supplies. At least uh, that's what Johnny Guru says. And uh, yeah, so just let me uh, open this up and then uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Alright everybody, I opened it up and I know the lighting's probably not doing it justice, but this thing's actually got a lot of detail. Even on the fan, it's got like these little EVGA logos and uh, the fully modular design here get a focus there's the motherboard the CPU VGA 1 SATA SATA 2 SATA 3 and the VGA 2 and 3 again all right so not bad. It's not a good, 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 uh, good hundred bucks, and uh, you know it's going to power my system for everything that I need. It's not going to save me, you know, any extra power, you know, in terms of if I would have bought a platinum or a titanium version, the extra like hundred, hundred and fifty dollars it would have slapped onto this thing is not going to save me that much of my electric bill. Um, 
with the little power supply calculator that I used, it would have took like 23 years for this thing to pay for itself back out, out of all this, the power savings from having the extra energy efficiency. So, yeah, just a little tip. I mean, if you're going to get one, use a power uh, calculator. Make sure you know exactly how much you need and maybe leave a little bit of room for upgrading. But, you know, don't buy, don't buy a power supply that you don't need. It's just going to be a waste of money. You can spend it on better memory, better graphics card, more, more storage or something like that. Anyway, thanks. So I got the temporary cooler mounted on the CPU and I used the Gamers Nexus um, big blob method uh, for this. Uh, they did a little test at Gamers Nexus and um, apparently the blob method works the best, although, you know, I'm guessing it from what he said, it really doesn't matter that much. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it sitting in there for now until I get my, you know. I, I was thinking about doing the EK water block, honestly. I think that's the, the one I want to go with. So, yeah, I, uh, I sprayed this down after I took it from my uh, AMD R9 290. I'm going to put it back on the R9 290 later. But for now, I just want to get this thing running and uh, see if it works. All right, see you in a, in a bit. All right, well, here's a little update. I'm, uh, I got the thing all taken apart and kind of semi put together just to do some testing. I did do a power up and I got an AE code, which uh, means booting to legacy OS. And um, yeah, so I think everything's working fine. Had to move the memory sticks to the correct position, but yeah, just, uh, now enjoying a little Star Trek while I uh, wait for some files to finish transferring from the old system to a backup hard drive that I'll put inside of the this system. And then uh, once I'm done, I'll be able to boot it up and put the video card in. So yeah, keep you updated.